since the, we don't have all the coordinators here, I should just at least mention their names. Paula Gonzalez was in, responsible for the uh, community mural, which is over the southeast corner. Southeast corner? Yeah. Southeast corner. And then we had, um, we also had, um, let's see if her name's on here, Judy Room. She was uh, another coordinator. She was for the east wall. And that was for the Native women's Native women's who are missing and murdered Native women's memorial wall, and for the uh, north uh, east corner or side of the wall, or at least it's the north side. Um, that was uh, Natasha Nouveau, and um, and for the and of course Lindsay was the one that did the wall right here was the water uh, teachings wall, and uh, I'm the coordinator for this wall right here, which is the history of the land. And um, so these are basically, these were the leaders and they were, they were the ones who put that idea together for their mural. Now, normally, like on a big project like this, you don't usually give uh, the free run to give people to do whatever they want to do. But now we had a lot of um, confidence with the people that were selected to be coordinators and uh, I think they did an excellent job. And uh, I think, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my mural here. This whole story here is a Anishinaabe story. It's, uh, it's, the, it's the history of the Anishinaabe people. And it begins with the beginning of the universe. And it, and it ends with uh, that uh, kind of uh, dip in the, in the front there with the two graffiti artists. We had a couple of graffiti artists working on this mural with us. And uh, I really thought that that was kind of a sign of the times that we are in. But going back to the beginning of the mural, I want to talk a little bit about Morisot, and I also want to talk about uh, uh, um, the book called Mashoma's book, and that was written by Edward Benton Benet. And uh, he's a very interesting gentleman. He, he, uh, he was the first one to coordinate uh, a First Nations school in North America, and that happened in uh, Minnesota. It's called the Little Red Schoolhouse. And uh, this happened in the early 70s. And I, and I think when you go back to those times, there was a lot of very interesting things happening because the 60s kind of opened up the doors for a lot of things to change. And the Native people were really involved in that because uh, the young people were looking for something. They weren't sure what they were looking for, but that generation was definitely breaking the mold. The people in the 60s changed everything. They called them the flower children. And uh, they connected really well with the indigenous people because we had a connection with the land. And that was something that they wanted to share. And so the First Nations people, they didn't have any problem sharing their knowledge with these young people who were interested in what we did or what we believed in and what our, our cosmology was all about. And I think these times that we're kind of in right now is we're in that similar phase where people want to change and they want something new to happen. And I think uh, First Nations people are probably going to be part of that as well because we have a, a really, a real deep relationship with the land. And uh, as our elders are kind of leading that way, they show us how to get connected with the land. But it's a personal choice. And I think uh, it's really important to acknowledge those things that we don't have a religion. Our, uh, what we believe in, it's our belief system. It's a way of life. So we are very different from all the other people that have come to these shores that we don't have a religion but we know that uh, a lot of the teachings and things that we we understand actually come from the land so when we look at our ancestors and we look to our elders to find out about those ancestors they start talking about how our ancestors were great observers of the land and great observers of all the life around and a lot of those observations we're looking at the nature because in nature there's perfection and a lot of our teachings and understanding about how we are and how we're to be here is to get uh, those teachings from everything around us. And I think that's what I was trying to do when I did this mural here, I was looking at those stories. I was looking at the arrival of the first man and all the animals coming to greet him and tell him who they were. And that's where our language comes from. So our language does come from the land. We have a, a, a relationship that's inseparable. And even though you know, in the more recent times, we have residential school and all those things that separated us from our culture, our language, and that, those teachings. There's still a sense of that connection. Can't quite make it out, 
but I think a lot of people are looking for that connection. I think it's really important for us to be able to tell this story through visually. And uh, I'm hoping that we are going to have a website up. And uh, I think I'm interested in getting a QR code for all of these murals so we can put that story online and people can come by with their phones, iPhones and press on it and they'll hear the whole story. Um, so that will require more funding. <laughs> But I think that's really exciting to have people to come by and just get the whole story even when we're not here. I think it's really important. I know uh, Kristen had a really brilliant idea. Uh, she wanted to put up a, a monitor up here that would continually tell the story for anybody that came by. That was a great idea. <laughs> so it still might happen. I think I would like to invite some of our, um, our artists who uh, were part of this just to tell a little bit about uh, their experience doing this mural and um, 